in the streets, we won't ever break. Here to uplift, yeah, we here to elevate. Hey, in the streets, wanna see you rise. Time to be a ruler of your own life. Inspire, we gotta take Come it higher. You a royalty, king and queen, call Come your sire. Have yeah, yeah. ruler, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. talking about an empress. Empower with the world through her talent and gifts. Sharing great lectures, skits and clips. Plenty interviews, this Come is on. an experience. Yeah, yeah. Real conversations, you gotta come see. Okay, this is what you need. Come and find us in these streets. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey. In these streets. We won't ever break. Okay. Get an uplift. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get an elevate. All hey. right. In these streets, we wanna see you rise. Time to be a ruler of your own life. Whoop, whoop. In these streets, we won't ever break. Yeah, yeah. Get an uplift. Wanna see you elevate. Let's go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're in tune with Not the Boop, the ruler, where we rule with what? Greatness in the streets. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, Betty. Hey, Ishabu. How you doing? I'm glad you tuned in today. Tonight. Y'all thought I wasn't coming on. You thought I wasn't going to be consistent. But guess what? I'm here. And I wanted to talk about tonight in the streets. I am so glad that we're back. I am here to help you rule your life with greatness. So the thing I wanna talk about today, about chasing your dreams, right? There are so, and I'ma try to, you know, I get so excited, so I talk so fast, I know I have to calm down. Hey, Betty, I love you. So I know I have to calm down, so I want to, um, so you can get a clear understanding of what I'm saying, right? Okay, so, um, you know how, when you want to do something, you say, man, you know, I'm doing this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that when I come home. Or, you know, you have a, a dream to be a great motivational speaker or you have a dream to be a great, um, uh, just to do big things, to own properties, to own buildings, to change lives, to inspire people, to do something. You have this great um talent and gift inside of you to rule with greatness right and that's my thing i want to teach people how i want to teach you how to rule your life with greatness and the way i look at things are are not going to be the same way that you look at things you're not going to think ruling with greatness is you know some people don't think ruling with greatness is having multiple properties and having money in the bank some people ruling with greatness and their success is coming out of prison and living in an apartment and being great and that is great however I wanted today I wanted to talk to the people about I was thinking and talking to one of my sister friends and I'm talking about chasing your dreams right I want to understand why aren't you chasing your dreams why are you sitting there on the couch watching TV and not going after the things that you aspire to do why are you so complacent with where you are I know so many people, you know, a certain, certain people in particular who are just satisfied with their life. And I'm not saying there's nothing with living wrong with living in the hood or nothing wrong with this and that, but you're just complacent with your life, right? So why aren't you being great? Why aren't you doing the things that's birthed? There's something inside of you that you must, that you keep itching. It keeps itching at the itching and scratching on the back of your neck is this yearning this desire every so often it's let me let me get this off the screen because it is distracting to me i don't know how to get it off the screen okay there it is okay so there's this yearning this something that you keeps aching it keeps coming up this thing keeps popping up inside of you like oh i want to I want to get an apartment building or I want to own this or I want to do this. But because of your fears, it holds you back because you you are so scared. Like fear is is um, evidence appearing real. Right. It's fake evidence, in my opinion. So you sit here, you know, you've been through. Now, let me talk about me. I've been through some traumatic things in my life. Right. I have been through molestation i have been through homelessness i have been through prison i have been through you know uh, feeling not loved you know somebody not loving me the people who who i who were supposed to love me i didn't feel that love right 
and growing up up this way, right? I did not make I don't I never make excuses for for the things that I have been through. Being in prison and being incarcerated and being in segregation for 368 days and not being fed properly and not and you just losing weight at the weight. It is traumatic. Being called um, dykes and being called um, feeling like I am made to feel isolated and feeling like I was nothing in the in a household where you where I grew up. I felt as if I was nothing because of the, the lifestyle that I chose, right? So I was isolated, right? Not only was I isolated, I was isolated in my home and I felt lost, right? Through feeling, even though I'm lonely, even though I'm feeling by myself, even though I was by myself in that, I still don't make excuses for my life. I still am not complacent. I still believe in myself. I believe that I am the greatest motivational speaker that ever was because I have not only do I have a story, but I have the ability to inspire. You have that same ability. You have the same ability. There is something inside of you that needs to be birthed. You know how long you've been carrying the same baby? You've been carrying the same baby for 25 years. You've been carrying the same baby for three years. You've been carrying the same baby that you were supposed to birth 50 years ago. So I'm like, why aren't you chasing your dreams? What do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose. You only have to, things to gain. It can change your life. Your dream, your talent that's within you can change your life. So I'm trying to check in with you to see why are you making excuses as to, well, nobody ever, nobody's ever going to hire a felon. That's not true. Nobody's ever going to give me a chance. Well, if they don't give you a chance, you create an opportunity. When I came home from prison, when they shut the door on me, I had to create my own nonprofit. I had to create my own job. I had to create my, there, even in, I'm always, I've always had to be in survival mode. And when you're always in survival mode, you have a tendency to not only just be creative, but I don't have time to see the negative. I only have the time to see the light inside anything, any situation. So I'm trying to figure out why aren't you being great in your own life? Why are not you not um, ruling with greatness in your life? Why are you so complacent? I cannot understand how I can go into prison for six and a half years and come out better, doing better and further along than so many people. I came home, when I came home from prison, guess what? I went and got my um, undergraduate, my criminal justice degree, my sociology degree. I went and got my master's degree and, certain my, and my, the doctorate degree. You know why I did those things? for me because I knew that I had to be a step above the rest. And even though, even though people still to this day try to bring me down, but you can try when you try and you're lying, you can't do it, you can't accomplish because you cannot bring me down. So I'm trying to encourage you to do what you have inside of you do because what do you have to lose even if you fail even if you fall down even if you feel as if your idea you want to start a business right you have that inside of you you want to be a i don't know you want to do something with children you want to do something with um some type of biking degree you want to write a book right the moment, let me tell you about my book. Now, y'all can pre-order the book. It's coming. Now, if you want to pre-order a book, you can DM me. But anyway, so uh, last week, I decided to write my book, right? And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to write my book. I'm going to get this um, this training program started again. I'm blah, blah, blah. And as soon as I did, my job called me and said, we need you to report to work tomorrow. And I was like, what? I was like, wow, that's not what I really desire to do. I desire, so understand, 
that when you make a decision and a declaration that you're going to do something, there are going to be all kind of things that will come after you. All the kind, this is you. And there's going to be a, all kind of things coming at you. Your kid's going to start acting up. Your husband and your wife is going to be start, start to act up. Your job is going to start to, to, to make other demands on your life. Your situation is so it's going to be a storm around you. But guess what? In the middle of the storm, there is you and you have to be calm. There's a calm in the, in, in the middle of every storm. And when you see that for yourself, and when you learn this, you there's nothing that can stop you. Nothing. Now, like I always want to talk about me because I want to give you that example that I'm not just talking. I'm speaking from experience. I went to prison and was sentenced to 150 months. That's 12 and a half years, right? And I met some good people in prison. Great people in prison, actually. But... That was considered, people would consider that a setback. You know what a setback is? When your life is going in a certain direction and something hits you and it just shakes the whole, your whole foundation. It shakes your whole world. It stirs up everything around you. But guess what? Even in me going to prison, even in me... <clears throat> sitting in the hall in segregation for 368 days i should be listen understand me let me get my mic right let me get my let me get my right mic right i should be crazy right now because i sat in the hole and when i say hole i mean segregate i sat in the hole for 368 days i should be crazy one room one cell one toilet, I ate there, I slept there, I used the bathroom there, and I took showers. I think they gave a shower twice a week or three times a week, even if you had a menstruation, right? And I should be crazy, no interaction with anybody else. But you know what kept me? It's not only the my higher power and the God that I believe in, but also that will, that tenacity inside of me that makes me say, and what happened was when I was there, I had a piece of paper and I had to write the vision down of what I wanted to do. I wrote down, okay, I'm gonna have me a nonprofit to help women coming out of prison. I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna have that, I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna put this together. So I wrote the vision down. And when I wrote it down, guess what? When I came home from prison, all the things that I wrote down on that paper, came to fruition because we are creative beings we are gods y'all don't believe me but the word said ye are gods but anyway we're gods and when when you learn that and comprehend that there's nothing that you can hold you back not your health not your mental state not your your finances like everybody told me oh my not even your credit right because we are ever evolving and everything can always change. Every minute, everything can change in your whole entire life, whatever you're going through. I was in prison almost 20 years ago. It was 20 years, I don't know, it was 1998. So you don't go and look at, look up, do your research. I'm all in the paper and everything. They thought that was, they, the devil thought I had me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but I, I, it didn't keep me from fulfilling the dreams that I had. I still became a doctor. Not a medical doctor, but I became a doctor in philosophy. You understand me? So what I'm saying to you, why are you sitting on the couch complacent? You don't like your life. Come here. Come here. Get close. You don't like your life, right? You don't like your job, right? Guess what? You can change all that. We don't have time to be complacent. You don't have time to be complacent. There's a will inside of you. And I know your kid, your, your children are, are probably acting up and whatever, but there's a will inside of you. You can, I want to encourage you to rule with greatness. I want to encourage you to do all the things. If you're scared to travel, take somebody with you, but see the world. 
because everything does not operate the way it operates in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or Madison, Wisconsin, or 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 Arizona, or Phoenix, Arizona, or or Chicago, Illinois. Everything does not operate the same. Get outside of your box. Get outside of your box because guess what? When you do, you will never regret it because you have lived that that experience. I don't regret going to prison. I don't because it made me who I am. It made me grow up. It made me not be so selfish. It made me see other people as human beings, people who did drugs, people who had killed people, people who have molested kids, people have, it showed me that they are human beings. It gave me an experience, meaning like, hey, why not? It showed me like there's anything that isn't as possible. Everything, anything is possible. And you have to understand that anything is possible. So while you are not chasing your dreams, why are you sitting on a couch hating your life, hating your husband, hating your wife, hating your kids, hating this, you've done this and that. Change the dialect that's coming out your mouth. Change, man. I love my family. I love my kids. I love my husband. I love my wife. Change. You're not satisfied with your life. Change it. Before it's too late. Okay. Why aren't you being the great? When I say great, I mean the fabulous you. The one that you dream about. The person that you see. You see yourself like, I don't know, you might see yourself as Beyonce. Okay? Don't make your life experiences. Don't allow your life experiences. And they might be traumatic. Don't allow them to take over you and overtake your life and overtake and take over your personality and who you are and who you are. You have to know, even though you've been through some traumatic times, some trying times, you may have been molested. So have I. You have, may have been homeless living on the street when you were a teenager. So have I. You may have went to prison. So have I. You may have had, you know, growing up and had a, a mother who, who you felt that despised you. So have I. You may have, ne have not feel, felt love and didn't know what love is until you got grown, until you became older and adult. So have I. But guess what? None of that is an excuse. You cannot use it as, as an excuse as to why you are not where you should be. And when I say should be, I'm saying should be because there's something inside of you that feels like, man, I should be doing more. There's more. I have a sister friend I always tell. She has all these great epiphanies, right? And in every, uh, all her great epiphanies, and I'm like, she tells me and she talks about her relationship with her higher power and things of that nature. And I said, there's still more. It's more to life than sitting inside your house and regretting your life. There's more to life than that. Okay, so I want you not to make excuses for your life. I want you to get up, get out and do something. By this time next week, I want you to start. You know what I mean? When I say start, like you wanna start that business? I want you to start your business. Where well, you like, nah, boo, I can't, I don't, I, I don't know how to start a business. Okay, go back and watch the last week's episode when I told you to get your EIN number and your articles of incorporation. After you get your articles of incorporation, then you get your bank account. Once you get your bank account, you get to build up your business credit and then you operate your business. It's just that simple. It's simple. The IRS.gov, get your EIN numbers, okay? So I just want to encourage you today to be great to rule with greatness oh man yes okay rule with greatness in these streets you don't have to be complacent you don't have to be average because guess what there is nobody in the world like you nobody in the world like you did you hear me do i need to say it again there's nobody in the world like you like you, you mad at your baby daddy for what? Because he's not taking care of your kids, your children. 
You mad at your mother. And you got to listen. The other thing, you need to learn how to forgive. Have forgiveness. So I want you to know, I want to understand why. I want you to really reflect and think about why are you sitting on the couch accepting, why are you sitting on the couch accepting what life has to offer you instead of taking what you want, what belongs to you, because ye are gods, you are God. So I'm trying to, I want you to understand, like, there's more to life than just your four walls. Now, I'm, the analogy I'm trying, I'm going to give you is when I was in prison, I was in that, those four walls. And in any room, there's basically four walls, right? But I had to step out, even though I was in segregation for that long, I still had to step out of segregation to get to my freedom. I had to step out of four walls of prison to step out of it to get to freedom, which was my home, my real home. And I'm going to tell you a story. I was in prison, in, in the women's prison. The, the, I was in the maximum security prison for six years of my incarceration, right? And so there came a, there came a time where they were going to send me to a minimum camp. And so I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going somewhere else. I'm about to get it. And then, but my psyche was not ready to move from the place that I had already been for six years. My psyche, my subconscious, my subliminal was not ready to move on because my subliminal was scarce. So what my subliminal and my psyche did was made my body physically sick. So I wasn't going to be able to transport to the minimum prison. You know why? Because my mind said, my mind became scared because I am used to this place. I'm accustomed to this place. I've been in this place for six years and this is all I know. And I'm scared to go to a new place. But guess what? My friend told me, she said, you better get yourself together. And when I say I was sick, I was physically sick. Not, this was ready. This was ready. This right here, my heart was ready. I was like, yes, I'm going to minimum. I'm going to a new place. I'm ready. I'm good. But guess what happened? This wasn't ready. So I became physically sick. I had, you know, my stomach was messed up. I kept going to the bathroom and they were like, hey, the officers were like, you got to, you, you ready? You got to go. But my, but I, my mind wasn't ready until my friend had said, look, ma'am, you better get yourself together right now. And I said, yeah, I got to get myself together. And when I got myself together, I was able to leave that place that day. But had I not, and I was so used to it, and I came complacent, and that's what's wrong with some of you. Some of you, some of us are so used to being in this place. Some of us are so used to being abused, to being verbally abused, to being men calling us out our names. To being calling other people out their names. To being, you so used to fighting. And you so used to having nothing. And you so knew this and that. And when you do that, you said, oh, when somebody comes and brings you an opportunity, you like, oh, I can't do that. Your mind, your heart is ready, but your psyche is not. And the mind is a powerful thing. But you're complacent in this place. So the reason why you're not striving to do your best and out here doing, doing, uh, what your heart is really wanting and desire to do and going forth with your gifts and your talents because your mind is not ready. Because you're used to being in this place. You're used to being um, downtrodden and crestfallen and you're used to being in living in poverty and you're used to having bad credit and you're used to having nothing. But what you have to do is get yourself together. And when I say get yourself together, I mean, just do it. And if you're scared, do it anyway. And if you're seeking, I need a, a mentor or this and that, reach out to somebody. Reach out to the people who are doing what you want to do. And see and, and build up a, an opportunity. And don't come begging. Like, you know, people, oh, I want you to help me with this. And I want you to do this and this and that. Yeah, a fair exchange and a robbery. We used to say it in prison. 
what do you have to offer when you want people to mentor you and this and that because you got to understand that's time that they're taking out of their lives and out of their this and that otherwise you can get you a mentor or oprah could be your mentor just watch everything that she does watch instagram how go back and uh, and research her her um her career how she had that big bouffant and then she went to a small one and then she went to a big one and this and that, and that, and that. watch how how she moved the, the moves she make in, made in business. Those things, those things are, they can be your mentors from afar. They don't have to be your um, mentors that you have to sit down and talk with. Get the books that they've written, right? So why are you sitting on the couch accepting what life has to offer you instead of taking what belongs to you? Boom, all right? I can't comprehend why why we do that okay so now let me see if i have any questions any comments any concerns nobody hey tanisha hey casey hey girl so listen listen all right now i've said all i'm gonna say about that no i haven't don't you want more out of life don't you want to put your family in a better financial situation? Don't you want to give your children a better opportunity, greater opportunities? Don't you want to travel the world, see the world? Don't you want to, I mean, I know it's COVID, but you know what I'm saying? Put your mask on and go do what you got to do. But guess what? There's more to life than what you're doing right now. Why are you so complacent? Why are you so lackadaisical? Why are you so sitting accepting when you know that you are a ruler, you are a queen, you are a king, you are an emperor, you are an empress? Why are you so complacent? All right, so that's just all I have for today, but I'm about to get into the gold nugget corner. Y'all already know the cold corner, the gold, gold nugget corner. Sorry, I stuck sometimes. I'm not sorry about it. It is what it is. It's just my makeup. Why this thing keep doing this? Okay, so um, Gold Nugget Corner, we're going to talk about credit. Today, I wanted to tell you about um, what questions do I have in regards to credit? Because there are people who want to talk to me. And, you know, I told y'all, it costs, it costs to talk to me. That's a consultation, you know, you know, because I know what I'm worth. You know what I'm saying? How much you charge? You can DM me for that information, but, you know, be prepared to uh, pay me. Pay me what I weigh. You understand me? Because this is the thing. Here's the thing. I studied for a long time for the information that I acquired over the years. And I still study. I read a lot of books. I skim through a lot of books. I pay for a lot of information. So, um, <clears throat> it's a consultation, you know, it's not, nothing in the, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Now, let's go. Okay. So the gold nugget corner is where I give credit tips, credit information, business credit, personal credit, and how you start your own business. So today, I don't know if I talked about rental karma last time. I'm sure I did. So rental karma is a place where you people who, individuals who rent, um, R E n t a wait yeah r e n t a l k h a r m a rental karma so you can go to rentalkarma.com and i'm not giving uh legal advice if you need you know you need legal advice to seek a a, a, a lawyer you know i'm an attorney myself because anybody who practice law is an attorney look it up in the black law dictionary that was a tidbit as well. All right, now setting up. Do you want to know about setting up a new businesses or no? Okay, so rental karma. That's one gold nugget. The other gold nugget is myjuryclub.com. The other gold nugget is um, myjuryclub rental karma crown jewelers.com. Those places will give you five twenty-five dollars and I believe $5,000. So they're basically over $10,000 in credit. They will 
give to you and report to all three credit bureaus that you have this credit. So if you want to instantly, did you hear me? Did you hear me, girl? Uh, or boy? Or your mama? Okay, so you can go to those places, rentalkarma.com, myjuryclub.com, and you can also go to crownjewelers.com and you can acquire, did I say rental karma? My Jewelry Club, Crown Jewelers, and I'll give you another one before I end this, but Rental Karma is not gonna give you $10,000 in credit. They're gonna report to the credit bureaus that you're paying your rent on time. And that is, A, and they will also report like from, um, if you pay them enough, they'll report, not enough, I think it's like a hundred and some dollars for that. They will report for two years past and they'll put that on your credit report. So a credit report is made up of your history does everybody know what the credit report is made up of? Because a lot of people don't know or they think they know. And let me log in. Um, um, the credit report is made up of your history. So if you go and you can buy a trade line if you want, you can go to MJ Trade Lines and the trade line is just um, like a credit card. You can get on somebody's credit card as an authorized user and you can purchase those and get that. If you have a good credit, or decent credit and you just need a boost say you're at five something and everything negative is off your credit guess what you can go to my my uh mj trade lines and purchase you a credit line for maybe uh it'll be a twenty five thousand dollar credit card you had get get that you don't get the credit card you get to sit on their credit card for a month as an authorized user and that will boost up your credit score so you basically be in 700s if you if now get a twit. Now you hear me, right? I said if you have, if you have all the negative items off of your credit report, if you have the negative items off of your credit report, report then you can go buy, purchase you a trade line, sit on there, coupled with Rental Karma, my jury club. So if you, if you buy a twenty five thousand dollar trade line, and then you have my jury club and Crown Jewelers your credit score will go up into 700s and after that then that's when you apply for your own credit or go buy your own house or buy your own whatever that's how you do that okay so let me make sure i don't have any questions all right so this is how you that's how you boost your credit up really quick crown jewelers myjuryclub.com mason's easy pay yeah i know you thought i wasn't gonna tell you but i tell you Mason's Easy Pay, Crown Jewelers, MyJuryClub.com, and if you go to Mason's Easy Pay, they'll have a other list of other ones that you can, other um, places where there's going to boost your credit. So, you know, uh, My Jury Club has a membership of $99, so you have to pay that, plus buy something for $100, which you'll, you'll end up paying basically $150 for whatever to be a member, and they'll report your credit every month. That, but they'll give you a $5,000 line of credit. So those are some of the things. That's the gold nugget corner. And I want to encourage you to be the best you that you can be. No matter what, no matter what somebody does, no matter what someone says, be the best that you can be. I want to encourage you to rule with greatness in your life because guess what? Nobody else is gonna do it, you have to do it yourself. Nobody else is gonna put the effort in to make your life better, but you. You cannot make excuses for all the things that you've been through in your lifetime. You have to overcome all of the problems, all of the stuff that you, you know, all this, the homelessness, the molestation, the feeling bad about yourself, the talking bad to yourself, to allowing people talk bad to you uh, and about you. You cannot make that Allow that to be an excuse as to why you are not doing what you need to do. I want to encourage you. You are beautiful. You are loved. You are wise. You are creative. You are articulate. You are handsome. You are the mo the baddest person. When I say bad, I mean bad. Baddest person that you know. 
And you have to have that attitude, regardless of if you can't read or write, or if you don't know how to say, uh, utilize big words or whatever. You are the best you. Can't nobody beat you being you, baby. You hear me? You heard me. Can't nobody beat you being you. Love on yourself. Hold yourself. Pat yourself on the back. Girl, you looking good today. Boy, you looking good. You looking sharp. Love on each other and speak life and into each other. Now, I hope you enjoyed this podcast for today. Okay, for this evening. And you have been in tune with Nabu the Ruler, where we rule with what? Greatness in these streets. I'll see you next time. Same time, same place. All right. Bye, y'all. Hey, in the streets, we won't never break. Here to uplift, yeah, we here to elevate. Hey, in the streets, wanna see you rise. Time to be a ruler of your own life. Inspire, we gotta take it higher. You are royalty, king and queen, call you sire. Now who the ruler, yeah, I'm talking about an empress. Empower with the world through her talent and gifts. Sharing great lectures, skits and clips. Plenty in the this is an experience, real conversations, you gotta come see, uh, this is what you need, come and find us in these streets, ayy. Hey.